Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, people. And thank you for joining us for the November monthly homework discussion. So with me, to, I'm Lisa from Shady Tree Stitches. And with me today, we have pretty much the usual crew for the monthlies now. We have Nat from Knitting Nat Stitches. We have the Evervescent Joni from Virtual Stitches. <laughs> and Beth Ann from, I've forgotten. Stitching by Twilight. Stitching by Twilight. Sorry, Beth Ann. I always forget. So um, Carla is unfortunately sick today. But that's all right. I think four of us can come up with enough combined brain power. And remember, we um, do this so that we can show you our thought processes and the way that we um, try to do as much double dipping as possible, working on our focus pieces, covering all the different groups. So we're going to be covering four different groups. And as usual, we will start with the School of Magical Stitches and Literature. All right, that's me. Let's kick off. We're going to be stitching from oh, today through to the 30th of November. Um, we have five tasks. Each of them is 300 stitches and three points a piece. Okay. The first task that we are trying to make together a half, two animals that we can put together. So kind of thinking about a minotaur or something or another mythical creature that's two halves of an animal. So we're stitching on two animals that we can put together to make a villain. Joni. All right. Joni. What two animals have you got that you can well, put together? <clears throat> an eagle and a lion. Doesn't that make a griffin? Yes. That would work mm. together. Do you have a piece that has an eagle and a lion on it? Uh, I'm not in that group. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, oh, that's oh. okay. Eagle and a lion. Uh, would be fine. Yes, I do have a piece that has. Uh, an eagle and a lion. Um, the Amazing Animal Kingdom. Yep. My shelf mm. has a big cat and an eagle. I'll show you a mm. picture of it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a picture of my shelf. <laughs> Beth Ann? Oh, boy. Um, does it have to be like one that's already like a known creature or can you make up your own creature? I think you can make up your own creature. It might be cute to give it okay. a name if you're making it up. Um, well, I could go for a dinosaur and a whale. Yeah. What could you go for those in? Um, quick stitch museum shelf dinosaurs and shores a hawk on hollow. So both those peoples have a dinosaur and a whale in them. This one has a whale and this one has dinosaur skeletons. But it doesn't have to be on one piece? Yes. Stitch on a whip that has two animals mm. that you can put together. Does your hawk run hollow have maybe a horse on it? I have a seahorse and an eel or fish. Yeah, there you go. Combine that would make it very... And yeah. Interesting. Plus, I have mermaids, animal. which are people and fish together. Yes, yeah, so do your shores, I would say. Yeah. All right. Well, for me, I haven't given any thought yet about which animal I will be doing, but I will be working <laughs> on my amazing Animal Kingdom bookshelf. Coming to mind straight away, we've got this, this whale tail. So, Maybe I'll combine my whale with the kangaroo. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm sure I can work something out from that one. And it's one of my um, focus pieces for this month. So, Yeah, it works. Mm. Well, my focus piece is going to be um, Life is an Open Book London, which is a Heaven and Earth Designs. And on here is a statue of a lion and there's a raven standing there. So a lion and a raven. So kind of like your griffin, but um, a little bit more British, I guess. <laughs> You've got a horse up in the top corner as well, Nat, if you decided you want to do something with that. 
Yeah. yeah. So any yeah. whip with two animals would work. You just have to be creative and make it work, I would say. Um, yeah. If you want a bit more detail on that, I believe the headmistress will be talking about the Magical Stitches monthly in the weekly homework um, video as well. So she might have a few other astute comments to make. Yes. What's next? Uh, next. Okay. Buzz Lightyear balloon was cut and glued back together. Stitch on a whip that has something that could be broken and then glued back together. Choni. What have you got that could be broken and then repaired? Anything? Um, I would go with Shores of Hawk Run Hollow because um, ships can break when they run onto On the rocks ground. and then, yeah. and hopefully they can be repaired. That's a good one. I like that. Without a whole lot of. <laughs> <laughs> without dry docking <laughs> can you come back to me in a second i just realized i don't have the photo to show you oh okay oh, Beth oh i have shores right here oh, oh well you Beth have... already showed it she just showed it yeah <laughs> oh, and she's showing it again <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna go with museum shelf dinosaurs because these are the skeletons in a museum. So if they break, they have to repair them. Mm -hmm. That's right. So and they can the still be on display. Yeah. 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 Excellent. All right. My, my photo, I'll get up on the big screen because it needs to go into my album, is my Lest We Forget by Paddock Lane Designs because I know from experience that you can break your bugle and tape <laughs> it back together. I had a tuba when I started playing that had a hole in the tubing and so it was really airy and we eventually worked out if we put blue tack and sticky tape around it it sounded better so I'm going to use my, my lest we forget for that reason mm -hmm. and now I'm going to get it up in my whip album so yes good idea um I'm going to go back to sharing my screen again Life is an open book London because there's a teacup and saucer and a teapot which we know can be broken and put back together again. Yep, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, number three. Stitch on a whip that has taken the place of another in becoming the favourite to work on. So you had a favorite and something else, something new and shiny has come along and replaced it. What is your new favorite? Joni. Um, I would have to go with Cornish Folkies is my favorite right now because I want to get this finished before the end of the year. And mm -hmm. I'm about halfway there, uh, to wow. a third. But anyway, I should be able to get it out by the end of the year because I just have to finish him and all those little diddly things. Yeah. Well, I think this is a really easy prompt, really, because almost anything could be your your new favourite. But I yeah. have to admit that I had never done a Mirabilia before I started stitching Alice. And and when I started her, I fell in love and now I have 50 billion Mirabilias. So um, Alice is one of my focus pieces and she's my favourite one of my focus pieces for this month. Pretty. Mm. Beth Ann? My birthday start, Sonara, I have an unearthed oh. design by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. Yeah, she's, I she's just, stunning. I love it. And I, I, I try to use it now um, with everything. And it was magic study before, but now it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> I see your favorite no. changes. Some people changes often, other people it changes not much. 
Beth Ann mm. has a tendency to, once she starts something, she doesn't want to put it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big time. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> Similar to Lisa, um, it's only been recently that I've started stitching Mirabilia and yeah, when I pick it up, I don't want to put it down. Um, I'm also using this one for a double dip. We'll see it a bit later, but this oh, is at my net. Gorgeous. Oh my and gosh. Yeah, exactly. She wow. is just divine. She's so poised and fashion forward for her time. So 1930s and yep. oh my gosh. She's She's timeless and mm -hmm. just so beautiful. Beautiful. So I love to get her out and stitch on her. Um, yeah, yep. She's 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 who. <laughs> if I could be a Mirabilia chart, that's she's me. <laughs> I haven't done a Mirabilia yet or uh -huh. a North Orbit. Oh but dear. I have a feeling it once I take that plunge and I I, I start the first one, it's mm -hmm. it's it'll end up a rabbit hole because there's there's some that I'm not they're pretty but just not my style. But like the one that Natalie is doing is yeah. Oh, something like that. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, she's actually quite large as well. So there's a lot going on in her and uh you need to have a bit of a stash of um, DMC 310 as well, just quietly. <laughs> um, <laughs> next, next prompt. We are having some trouble getting in trouble with security. Stitch on a whip that caused you to get into trouble. Either with your significant other, with your checkbook or wallet, or your skill level. What have you struggled with? I know what she's struggled with. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Joni, while Joni's looking, Beth Ann. I'm going to have to go with samplers. I di didn't touch them until mm -hmm. I started the Nellies from Hands Across the Sea. And now I need to do every one of them. And I've got like four samplers in this batch here, but another hands across the sea, Sarah Spencer. Yeah. So yeah, samplers have gotten me in trouble because I need to have them all. <laughs> and bank uh, account doesn't let me. <laughs> have you found it yet, Joni? Yes. Yep. I couldn't Thank find you, my, um, I was looking for my dragon. But this one is good because this is a Carolyn Manning pumpkin patch. And mm -hmm. I am just over the moon with her big blocks of color and, and well, little blocks of color, but I just, oh. And of course, then several more have found their way. So you got into trouble because you've been buying the collection, have you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that guilty face. <laughs> All right. Well, mine is, yep, mine is purely a, a significant other situation. This was my new year, new start this year. And when he saw me started, he went, what? You're starting another one with houses on it. What the? <laughs> so um, I got in trouble for starting this one, but I love it. And it's because it's got Jenny and I did it together and it's got us up the top standing next to our houses. Mm. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. So mine is I got in trouble with my skill level. Um, just pull it up. There we go. We can see it. So this is Blue Flower Sleeping Bee. Um, I'm stitching this on 40 count. And it's the first time that I stitched on four, that I've been stitching on 40 count. Um, and I thought, yep, that's all, that's fine. I'll get, I'll be able to count that out, no problem. And within a week of starting it, or or a couple of days of starting it, I'd miscounted. 
but I didn't realise it until I'd gotten significantly further along and I I spent a day and a half pulling out stitches that I'd spent two weeks putting oh, in. Yuck. Yeah. So it's it's fixed now, but I've got a lot of catching up to do. Cool. Mm. Okay. The last prompt is our movie, our watch along. And so we're in our last showcase country, which is Mexico. You must show the start of your stitching with the beginning of the movie and the end of your stitching with the movie credits. There is no stitch count um, and it's for, worth two points. And you can choose from Coco or the, I can't say this word properly, Caballeros, Caballeros. Caballeros. Caballeros, okay, thank you. We don't speak a lot of Spanish. I've never heard of that movie at all, but anyway. You, you'd like it. Is it The Horses? It's a cartoon. It's got Mickey and uh, Goofy and Donald. Okay. They're the three caballeros. Oh, okay. Friday. Got it. Okay, cool. All and right. that is Magical Stitches Monthly. And as Lisa said, Vicky reading and stitching the headmistress is going to also give a bit of an explanation and probably a little bit more of an in-depth discussion on the story behind the monthlies in the weeklies this week yeah yes so look out for that and that'll be on sammy sammy j's channel but the links mm -hmm. go in all the different usual places so you guys just follow the links i imagine okay yep. so we next go to the cross stitches journal and daily 30. joni well this month we have to base our stitching on stamps postage stamps and we must find an image of a postage stamp and then tie a whip into that image. So it's kind of, you pick your whips and go find stamps that match because Lord knows there's a stamp for everything. <laughs> and um, so with that in mind, I just went and found a bunch of pictures that would match my um, Whips. Now, do you want me to show all my whips? Show the ones you picked and why did you pick them? Okay. I picked Pumpkin Patch because there's an Amish quilt series of stamps through the United States Postal Service. And this looks like that. Yeah. And then I picked Cornish Folkies again because um, I found a stamp with a man on it. Here's Ross. And a stamp with a house or boat on it, a stamp with hearts on it, and there's hearts right here, I think that they are. So that's for that one. Then I went with Shores of Hawk Run Hollow because I have a stamp with a, can you see that okay? Yep. A ship yep. on it and then fishies. And this little block down here has 14 freaking little fishy, or fishies in it. So that's going to take some, some fishies. And I found one with a flower so I can start April by Prairie Schooler. I'm trying to get all of their month ones started for next year so I can work on them. Yeah. And I found one with a flame, a stamp with a flame. Because my December prairie schooler up here in the corner, this corner, that is a fireplace burning logs. <laughs> yeah, so, cool. That works. And last but not least, I would like to get this started. It's the brown bird sampler from Bent Creek. There's four of them in this series. They're all kind of seasonal. You have a... Um, this is the summer bird and oh, just found a bird. Awesome. What about you, Beth Ann? Okay. My first one is I found a stamp um, from Egypt in 1926 and 
it has the same statue, same Ramsey statue that's in the corner here. So that's the first one. Uh, mm -hmm. The second one is I found a giraffe sta stamp because I love giraffes. And I'm going to do um, Quick Stitch Hazel World Giraffe, um, who I've renamed as Easy. And um, I want to get him started before the end of the year. So, and then I did um, one with an elephant. I found one with a mama elephant and a baby elephant. So elephant friend Aww. from Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And again, another hay, cute little baby elephant. And then I found a dinosaur one. So we're going to go with my museum shelf dinosaurs. And then this one, um, I want to also start before the end of the year. So I figured the monthlies will give me a good chance to get them going. Uh, Leah Gronauer, can't really, there we go. Um, but I found one with a flower and there's lots of flowers in this chart. Um, I did a Christmas stamp with Charlie Brown <laughs> and then I'm going to do Kringles. I've already started it, but I want to work on it again. And um, I picked a bird for um, a cardinal and then Sarah Spencer. There's lots of birds. And shorts on my friend hollow for the house and the ship. Cool. So I got one with the house and one with the ship. So you're getting a bit of double dipping happening there across the pieces, which is yep. good. And also um, for um, a purple flower, I'm doing uh, Lizzie Kate's Less More series. So I want to get that started as well. So. So you're really, really honing in on and getting things prepared for No New Starts 2021. Yes. Cool. Well, I took a different, a different approach to you guys. I actually went to my wallet and found what stamps I had to start with. Um, and it's 500 stitches on each one and you can do as many up to 10 that you want to. And if you do at least five, you get a, a prize. So I found I had these two cute little stamps of a wombat and a koala. They're current Australian stamps. So then I thought, right, well, I also have one with a flower on it, but I haven't got that on me. Um, and I thought, right, well, I'm going to use Australian stamps because they're a bit different. So I'm actually going to be annoying and show you my stamps as well as my projects. <laughs> so for my cute Australian stamps, surprise, surprise, at Joni's suggestion, because she's awesome, I'm going to work <laughs> on Anzac because there was a wombat and um, the koalas, so there's the koalas, and I'm sure the wombat's there somewhere hiding. So um, there's plenty of Australian native animals anyway, even if I can't find an exact wombat, there'll be something that's um, similar that I can do as a native animal. So I'm gonna do that one for both of those ones. That for the one that was flowers, surprisingly, if I to find it, I've got so many different ones here, you can see them as I flip through, where is it? Hiding. Well, my amazing animal kingdom, which is escaping me at the moment. Too many to browse through it quickly. It's not coming up. Anyone see it flicking by? No. no. There it is. No. It's tiny. <laughs> um, oh. all right. It's hard to see, but just in this bit here, there are some flowers. So I figured I could use that for the flowers. Um, the next one I have is um, this one. So, so that was all the real stamps I had. But this one is a bunch of ladies, um, wrens, I think we called them, that were in the war. And they're a bunch of um, like Air Force and nursing ladies. Um, so I oh, figured, wow. and then the other one, because I'm trying to sort of minimize and focus, this angel playing a bugle. Mm -hmm. those so, so those ones I am going to put in with 
the most recent addition to this file, which hasn't shown up yet. Well, the less we forget. Are you going to do the Christmas, your Christmas angel? No, I'm not. I'm going to do my less we forget that I showed you before with the bugler and the war. Because okay. um, I, I thought if I do two on each because it, it's 500 on each and this will double dip with some semi sayings where I need a thousands. So the next ones I had is I found this picture of a, a woman. And I also have a picture of a woman outside St. Mary's Cathedral. And so I thought I would get my double dipping happening with Alice because she's a woman. So I think that would be an easy way to double dip that one. And then the next one that I'm actually going to do is Australian iconic stamps. Hold on. I'm sure I made a better picture of this. We have got a cartoonish picture of, of the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge. And these ones, I'm going to be very literal. And I've just bought this pattern um, to help with some prompts. The world's a postage stamp. And so it's oh. got features of all postage stamps of all different um icons from around the world and see there's the opera house from sydney mm -hmm. so even though it doesn't have the actual harbour bridge it's all icons from different things there's different you know you got, you got power bridge. yeah so i think i can like double dip that one and use the actual postage stamps one um and then the last one because i had to come up with the 10 because you can i actually went for a traditional australian house because a man's home is his castle, isn't it? Right? So I'm going to match that one up with not what you would expect. I've got to find it. These are all my whips for no new starts next year. Here it is. I'm going to match it up with this one. That's a man's castle. <laughs> oh, wow. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's my postage stamps. Natalie? <laughs> Natalie hasn't okay. had much time to think, I don't think. <laughs> oh, I haven't been thinking about it a lot, but similar to you, I've gone for the Australian animals. I'm just going to show it up on my iPad. Hopefully there's not too many reflections. Oh, they're but cute. This is an Australian series from, oh, 2001. So it's old called Wild Babies and there's possums and wombats, koalas the bird life which kind of screams Anzac to me yeah it does and you're trying to get it finished so yeah I'm I, I could maybe get it finished Ooh. uh other stamps so thinking Christmassy um I found a whole bunch of images of Australian Christmas stamps there's Ooh. some singing that's happening carols and things like that so I've got some whips that reference music um and another Christmas whip that I've got is Santa with penguins so oh. I've, I found that one with a penguin oh, and so, can I I'm going to butt in and show you another one you could use for for Santa with penguins mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes of course Santa Surfing and then, Santa. yeah, it and there penguins. are stamps. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to um, double dip as much as I possibly can with semi sane, which we're going to get to yeah. soon. Um, with my life is an open book, London. So it's got um, birds. It's got um, lions and statues and old buildings. Uh, it's also got cars and trains. And so there are a series of cars and trains and postage stamps. And as you could well. go old school and get one of the ones like England have with a picture of the Queen's head on it because you've got the crown uh -huh. there. Royal <laughs> Mail stamps. That's yep. all right. Because there's the crown there as well. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So I think you can have fun with this. It's, it's pretty easy. It doesn't have to be a stamp in your wallet, but, you know, I yeah. just want to start with what I actually had. Yeah. Okay. And 
yeah, just finding, just do a Google search or, a, or even a Pinterest search for images of stamps, postage stamps. Mm -hmm. um, pick a theme. Think about what you want to stitch on. Um, and if you're going to double dip, think about what you're already stitching on and add that to the search engine. Yeah, that would be yeah, like with them. animals, Christmas, um, women, men, children. They, they have lots of lots of stamps with based on children, whether it's um, children's drawings. I know St. Jude Children's Hospital, which is a famous hospital here in the United States every year they design a postage stamp yeah. done mm. by the kids that are being treated for cancer. You might even want to do a theme like that and say, I'm going to do all the ones that are, you know, or if you want to be, you know, contribute, there's probably one of those sort of sets available at the moment for purchase. You can go to your post office, purchase the set of whatever the latest fundraising stamps are and use that as your inspiration of what to find, find which whips suit them. Yeah, it's it, the way that she's got it. I mean, it's oh, it's so many possibilities. Mm. You could pick a country yep. and say, okay, I'd like to either do us like you're doing with Australia. Same with you, Natalie. Or we could do England, or you could do India. Yeah. Or I mean, do whatever you want. So many ways. Yep. And you said you can do one. You can do ten. It's up to you. Uh -huh. yep. All right, now to the one that has the most for the month. Oh my goodness, semi sane. We keep saying semi sane because that's their name. It's not a definition of the group whatsoever. No, it's completely <laughs> insane. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with the biggest one because this is what I've been using as my benchmark for my double dipping. I found things that fitted this, and then I've used that as as my starting point for everything else. Um, keeping in mind that I'm also still trying to finish my work, my scavenger hunt for the daily 30. So I tried to fit those pieces in as much as possible um, this week. All right, so we are going around the world to fabulous cities. So the first one is 5,000 5, stitches on anything you want. And that's not 5,000 on one project. You just add them all up and you know, whatever. So I just generally chuck my leftovers in there and get there quite easily. Um, the next one is, it's to do with particular cities. I'll just have to get those cities up. But the first prompt is something to do with one of those cities. London, London, Paris, and Rome. Thank you. London, Paris, and Rome. So Natalie, what have you got for London? <laughs> Let me guess, what have you got for London? <laughs> do we, do we need to see it again? <laughs> it's an open book London, you're seeing it again. <laughs> there we go. She's got a thousand stitches at least coming on that. At Just, least. Joni, what have you got? I'm not doing that one. Okay, that's fine. Um, do you have any any of your whips that jump out to you though and scream London, Paris or Rome? Oh yes. I have the London skyline from Perfect. John Clayton, but it's uh -huh. not right here. That's okay. Just the name is it's helpful to people. Beth Ann? Uh, quick Stitch Museum shelf dinosaurs because they do have dinosaur skeletons at the British Museum. That's all right. Okay. And this is why I have started this week. Yeah. Right. We have. Ah. The, I mean, take your pick. I have the Eiffel Tower or I have yep. the, the London Tower Bridge. Bridge. Mm, yeah. yeah. So um, I just thought that would be, you know, worth doing i was thinking like you were there was skylines of different ones and i know there's a couple of different um companies like designers that have done different city skylines or the names with um london paris with different things in them and i i know i've seen one i i'm pretty sure it's just the see the little house or country cottage were the yes. ones i like the most um but then i thought if i get that postage stamp i'm covered for so many more things for next year yeah. So I, I went that way, but those those lines of the of the of the skyline ones I really like. Plus all the Satsuma Street ones. Yeah, the pretty little series. Yeah. yeah. So there's lots of lots of choices. Um, the second one is something to do with fashion, because Paris is the fashion capital of the world. So 
Natalie, what have you got that's fashionable? I am going to double dip with my fancy late my fancy Miravilia lady. So I she's showed her before. She's very fashionable. She's yes. So fashionable. Joni, what have you got that's fashionable? Well, I would go with Cornish folkies because um she's very fashionable for her time. Yes. Beth Ann? I'm going with Sunara because their dresses were so simple and they were done in gauze and linen, but they were just embellished to the hilt with all kinds of jewelry and precious stones. So that's her. And, and I'll be double dipping with Alice because she's very fashionably dressed to go to a ball. Okay, the next one, we'll also make another one of my suggestions make sense. Something with a castle. London has um, the Tower of London in it. Now, you say, oh, the Tower of London. In the centre of the Tower of London complex is the White Castle. Yes, there is actually a castle in the Tower of London. That's correct. And it's shown in that whip. Hmm. Joni, do you have any castles? Um, no. No? Beth Ann? No. I have grade two listed mansions, but no castles. No, and because this is daily 30, we don't have the answers. But, I mean, you usually get away with things, but it, you're still going to be pretty literal. So whereas I showed you the cottage before and said it was a, you know, man's home is his castle, I don't think that would cut it for this prompt. But no. uh, but the other side of it, this castle, well, yeah. That, that's definitely going to cut it for the prompt. So yes. I was just trying to double dip doing something on the castle. So mm -hmm. I'll double dip it with the stamps. Okay. Something to do with history or architecture. London again. It's going to get a lot of work this month. I'm going to be constantly working on my London whip, which is good. I really wanted to do it. So... Mm. Here it goes. <laughs> Joni? I have also got the John Clayton Big Ben, well, which is a pretty amazing piece of architecture, if you ask me. Beth Ann? Sonara, you can't get any more ancient than ancient Egypt. And <laughs> this could also be the castle because this is the building that the pharaohs lived in. A pharaoh's castle. Yeah, that would work. Well, you could try it. You've got nothing to lose. Okay, well, I'm I'm actually not going to do my Sydney Harbour Bridge or any of those big opera house. I'm going to, I brought it back to something really simple and just plain old architecture. So my mm -hmm. little house neighbourhood with those four houses to me was my most architectural piece when I thought about it. Um. And then the last one, so these are a thousand stitches on each. You can choose three or you can be insane and do all five. Um, something with a landmark from the cities. I know what Natalie's is going to be. <laughs> you have to yeah. say it, Nat. <laughs> oh, do I have to say it again? London. <laughs> Joni? I'm going with Big Ben. Yep. Beth Ann? Oh, gosh. Um... I have no, I'm, you're out I don't of that, that's fine. And I would use my, I'll do more on my postage stamps because it has all those landmarks from the countries that, that we're talking about. Okay, so that is the around the world, which is the biggest one. Then there's a, a lot more happening. So the next one, probably the next easiest one is called Connect Four. And the idea is that you have to pick four whips to work on during the month that are connected in some way um, with Connect Four. And then you have got, you have to have four different designers and you can either stitch the semi-sane version of 500 stitches on each or the insane version, which is a thousand stitches on each. Natalie. Now I'm not doing this game. Um, <laughs> So if I was, I would want to make it tie in as much as possible with the around the world. So everything is going to 
tie in in some way to my London whip. Um, so it has um, flowers in it. So then I could leap into any of my other whips that have got flowers. Um, Anzac has flowers. It also has animals. Um, it also has modes of transport. So there's another linkage that I could make there. Um, what else is, is what else is in London that I can leap across? It's got food. So I'm wanting to do a Christmas new start um, with the theme of food. Um, it also has, hmm, it's got reference to music and I've got another new start that has a reference to music. So there, there are a few things that I can leap to and from London and link those all together. And London's your theme. Mm. London is my theme. Joni? I would go with, um, I've never done one of these before. I'm still deciding if, I sh if I'm going to. But I would go with autumn. Mm -hmm. That's Wouldn't that be my theme? Yep. And that would allow me to start um, one of my prairie schooler months, I, October and November to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have the pumpkin patch by Carolyn Manning, which is all autumnal colors. Um, I also have the autumn soapbox by Bent Creek, mm -hmm. just the long skinny mm -hmm. thingy. And then I have uh, my autumn bird, which is the blackbird. Oh, no, I can't use him. He's Bent Creek. Oh, you have to find something else. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Well, I have another autumn piece. I just oh yep. haven't thought of it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a nice, easy theme. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Beth Ann? Um, I'm going to go with animals for my theme. Um, I'll start off with, again, double dipping with Daily 30, but there's whale and dolphin, eels and fish. Um, that's carriage house samplings. Uh, this is my giraffe. Hey, Dakota Detweiler. Um, my elephant friend. And dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Cool. That works well. And as nice. you say, the double and dipping. Again, and, double dipping yeah. so I and can get maximum out of yeah. it. And don't forget Sonara's carrying a cat as well. Yeah, but... Sonara and Elephant Friend are the same artist. Oh, okay. You can only do one or the other. That's right. Okay, and, and notice on that, it doesn't matter that they're all from Heaven and Earth Designs. It's you use the artist it's with Heaven and the Earth. Artist. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for me, I'm not going to show you because you've seen them all, but same thing. I wanted to double dip. My focus, um, apart from once I fitted in around the world, was to do my, my scavenger hunt pieces, which is my Amazing Animal Kingdom, my Alice, and my Lest We Forget. So those three, I had to find something that tied those three together. Can you guys think of anything? There is something that ties those three together. I might give you a hint. I'll put Alice back up because she's probably the one that's jumping out to you saying, what the? Because I actually found a theme that ties all three of them. And then the other one I'll do is Little House Neighborhood. Is it the vines? The flowers, yeah. Flowers, I was going to say flowers. Yep, mm -hmm. the flowers. I was so grateful she had flowers because there's flowers on all four of those pieces. Mm -hmm. So that's going to get me um, 3,000 stitches, which will be 10 scavenger hunt prompts at the level I'm at. So that's really exciting to knock over you know, a lot of that. So that's the Connect Four. Well okay, done. the next one that they're running simultaneously is the stitcheries. So stitcheries is like categories, and you can do basically each week, I believe, we're gonna have a set of categories to stitch on, and you do a certain number of stitches to do with a letter that changes each week too. So this week, um, and, and to do it, you can do a light version, which is 100 stitches per category, um, or if you can't find 
the item for your category, you can stitch on anything in that picture that starts with the letter, but you've got to do 200 stitches. Or you can do the big section, which is um, 250 on each. And if you can't find it, you get can do 500. So the letter that we are doing for this week is letter F. And the categories are something cold. Natalie, something cold with F. Oh, I've got a good one. Now, as you know, I'm double dipping a lot with London right now. While they don't drink beer cold in the UK, but that's how we like it in Australia. And there's a cold <laughs> beer. It's cold. <laughs> well, it's cold in London. So that's probably why they don't drink cold beer because it's already cold because even when it's warm, it's cold. Yeah. There's also an umbrella that's open and some puddles of rain. So, you know, cold and wet. Yep. Yeah, so. but it has to start with an F. It does. So. The froth. Frosty. The frosty, frosty beer. Frosty, frosty, frosty beer. beer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Froth on the beer. I like that. Yes, thank you. I'm going to take a note of that. Or she'll forget. <laughs> At least mm -hmm. you can ask us or watch the video again. Yeah, I can always <laughs> watch it again, get another view. Joni, what's your cold um, Something cold. I was really stymied and I came up with um, uh, frozen fingers. You know, my people in Cornwall have fingers and it's cold, so they're frozen fingers. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're frostbitten fingers. <laughs> yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Beth Ann? Um, Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, I'm going with the water is cold and here and here at the lighthouse, there are waves and waves are always frothy. Okay. When they're churning. I, I pay That's that. Good. I mean, That's again, we, ha we have no authority to pay anything. Well, for me, my amazing animal kingdom has got frozen water down the bottom. Right? It's frozen. That's pretty damn cold. Yep. That's pretty cold. The next one is something that would grow. Okay, there are flowers in my London Hade. Yep, there are. Joni? Um, once again, I would go with my Cornish Folkies because it has flowers all over it. Flowers, uh, yep. That's this guy. Yep, in case we've forgotten. <laughs> Beth Ann? Hey. <laughs> uh, elephant friend, there's little daisy flowers all around. Oh, you've all gone for flowers. No, I'm going back to my animal kingdom because there's a frog and a frog grows. <laughs> All right. The, the third one is something to do with the ocean. This is pretty obvious. Yes, pretty obvious. Well, in my life is an open book. Hey. Really? It yeah. Has. <laughs> this is a great because piece. Just in this corner here is a basket of fish and okay. chips. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's got fish and chips. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love it. That's a great piece. That's got so much in it. Joni, have you got anything other than fish? Jeez. Fish. <laughs> and fingers. And no, that you know, we haven't Hers got are frozen, <laughs> his are not. Okay, we'll get to them in a minute. Beth Ann, you got fish and shores. Something to do with the ocean. Fish, 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 <laughs> fish, fish, fish. Yep. And, and, and my amazing animal kingdom has fish in it too. So the easy option there, go the fish. Yep. All right. Um, Let's see. What is everybody going to do? This one's harder though. And this is not always getting cooked fish. Our fish is still cooking. <laughs> well, she may not be able to. I don't think she can do the same thing. I don't know if you can do the same thing twice. You'd have to at least do a separate set of stitches for it. Yeah. Right. I, might, I might need your help. Something to do with the kitchen, guys. Something to do with, with the kitchen, starting with F. Apart from the yeah. fish. I don't see any forks. No, there are no forks. There's um, food. There's a food, food. Look, there's a food, food. rack. You've got a food thing. thing. Food. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Food, food in the high tea. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Oh, you're such a great, great collective brain. Thank you. That's what we do with the collective brain. I can't do anything on my own. Joni. Um, I would go with food. Mm. And I have um, 
uh, my August Prairie Schooler month has ears of corn all over. Cool. My favorite corn. Well, I have to tell you something funny because when you first started talking about your Cornish folkies piece, we have food here called a Cornish pastry. And I thought you were stitching Cornish pastries. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is food. I'm this is Roth and Demelza from <laughs> <Bulldog. in> pastry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Beth Ann. Um, I'm going to go with Shores of Hawk Run Hollow and not for the fish, but there's seaweed and stuff, and that's used in sushi. Mm, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Well, this one's got me, it's, so it's anything to do with the kitchen. Starting and with F. Starting with F. Yeah. Well, I I was wanting to double dip and I was really being stumped again, but I was hoping to double dip this one. And I was thinking the flowers, because in my kitchen, we usually have a big vase of flowers. Plus you can use it as decorations on cakes and you can use it as food. There um, are edible flowers. Yeah. Oh, and poppy seeds are used in baking they are poppy so it is food seeds. So, so my flowers would be food and flowers mm -hmm. cool yeah double that one yay love mm -hmm. a good double dip triple mm -hmm. dip quadruple dip i forget how many dips we're up to at the moment yep and the last one obviously is pretty easy body parts fingers face Faces. feet 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 uh, Feet. Your Cornish folkies have feet if you don't want to use their frostbitten fingers. And it doesn't have faces. to be people. No. No. It's no, I have horses in there and, and mm. birdies and birdies have feet. So fish, no, fish it would be this one because as I said. Fins. Fish have fins. Fins. Mm -hmm. Cornish folkies. <laughs> I'm sorry. I went out of turn. It's your turn. Sadly, How are you going to fit London into this? <laughs> there, there are people and there, there are, are animals yeah. and they have feet. They have feet. She's got feet. <laughs> Beth Ann? Elephant friends. I mean, seriously, look at those little elephant feet. <laughs> they are cute. And he's got flappy ears. <laughs> Probably not the adjective, though. No. No. But you could say he has feet and flappy ears because your feet will get you the mark. And the cutest face imaginable. Yeah, and a cute face. I know. I mean, how adorable is oh, he? Oh, he's yeah. very adorable. Um, I will be being traditional and use my Alice. Double dip Miss Alice. Yes. Okay. So that is the three main games. We are still going with Halloween Town, believe it or not. It is still happening. I'm sorry, Lisa, I need to add up my stitches to help us out. Yes, you do, because I'm sure you'll, like, you won't need all of them and we'll get through to the next level because we're nearly, yes. yep, so please do that in a minute. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's a this or that Halloween or Christmas still happening, I think. Um, <laughs> Alphabet Soup is heading to W. Um, anyone got their W sorted they want to tell us? I haven't given it any thought yet. No. I can't do I it all. Is, it, is it the um, title or the designer or a combination thereof? I don't remember. It, it can be either the name of the artist or the title of your wit. Mm. W, was it? Hmm. Yes. Well, just while you're looking for that, they also have a non-counting event. So for the people who don't like counting and just want something simple, there's an autumn sal. So Joni could double dip in that with her autumn theme. And mm -hmm. you just put pro your starting photo and your ending photo during the month for progress um, for the autumn cell. And I think that is all we have. Yeah. Uh, let me see. W. And with somebody saying you can double dip within those events, right? Yeah. So your, your stitches for your thousand around the world could yep. also be used in your connect four or your yes. stitch category. Okay. Yep. Just okay. can't double dip within an event. And that, the most important thing with semi-sane 
is you have to space out your start and your end photo. They do not right. let you have them together. Mm. No. Which is the same as Crystal Academy, which doesn't have monthly, so we don't need to chat about that. Um, Natalie, did you find anything or will we move on? I think we need to move on. Sorry, you're on your own with oh. W's. No, I've got it. I've got it. Got it. Winter chill. Winter chill. Yeah, oh, anything with winter. Autumn land. Winter, yeah. Winter would be the easiest. There's also the work basket as a designer. Women. Um, waxing moons. Yep. Mm -hmm. And women. Anything with the word women as a starting point. All right, Beth Ann is going to move us on to the last um, monthly group, which is full coverage fanatics. Well, the last one we're talking about. I'm sure there's others. Mm. Okay. They have two events uh, for November. We're getting towards the end of the year, so everything is getting whittled down a little. But um, the biggest one is the Wheel of Fortune Challenge. And it's basically you have a counting option or a non-counting option. If you choose the counting option, you choose either one of the lists of words below based on some common themes for this time of year, holidays and traditions, or celebrate where you are in the world, Northern or Southern Hemisphere. Um, for each letter stitch, 50, 250, or 500 stitches to spell out each word. You get to choose the number of stitches, but choose wisely. You cannot change your chosen number of stitches once you start. And it's all on one whip? Yes. Right. For example, I'm in the Northern Hemisphere, so I will be stitching to earn the letters. In winter, I decide to stitch 250 stitches to earn each letter. I'll stitch 250 stitches six times for the six letters in the word winter on one project. And then I will move on to snow where I will stitch 250 stitches four times for the letter. Yep. So you, you, it doesn't matter if my whip has the letter in, in it or anything. No. You it's just, just purely a mathematical five, thing. Yeah. You have to add up whatever stitches you do, um, 50, 250 or 500. Cool. That's pretty and easy then, to double dip then. Yeah. And then you're... The, the categories and then the non-counting part, I'll get to the categories in a minute, but basically you, whatever words you choose, you just add up for each letter and then that's how many stitches and it has to be on one whip and then you move to the next word and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Does the next um, word, the second word have to be on the same whip as the first word? Yeah, you can use the same whip throughout. But you can, you can change from word to word, but not with yes. the word. But, but when you start the first word, like <coughs> say I was going to use my giraffe, I mm -hmm. would have to do that entire word with this whip. Yep. Right. Then I can put it down and yeah. then I can go to the second word and I can pick up said whip again, but you, you can't change it mid yep. right. word. And what, and what are the categories? Um, I was going to get to the non-counting. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, for the non-counting, your option, your second option is choose either one of the lists of words below based on some common, same thing. Um, there is no minimum number of stitches required, but we do need to be able to see progress in your starting and stopping pictures. You can choose to work on five different projects for each of the five words, or if you've got a project that will work for multiple words by theme, feel free to use it. Um, you got it, but with the non-counting, your project has to has to match the word. So, I know a lot of people don't like to count, but in this respect, counting is probably the best way to go because you don't have to match it. You can just pick whatever you want to use. Yeah. And the words, the season that you, there's three categories. Um, the first one is seasonal words, and you have celebrate, holidays, gifts, family, and traditions. Northern Hemisphere words are winter, snow, pumpkins, harvest, or autumn. And Southern Hemisphere words are spring, sunny, summer, outdoors, and parade. So you choose one of those categories, either counting or non-counting. But if you do the non-counting, you have to match up 
your say southern hemisphere words you would have to match up your project um to parade spring, it would have to have something spring in it mm -hmm. sunny would have to have a sun in it uh summer again something summery yep yep cool uh, Got it. yeah and parade you would have to match them if you do the non-counting but mm -hmm. if you do the counting you don't have to match you just stick to one whip per word yeah cool awesome mm. and that um, runs all the way until eleven fifty nine on november 30th awesome and yes and do uh, have any others yep this one's right up natalie this one will be perfect for natalie for november full coverage fanatic has been this whole year traveling around the world and we are in the united kingdom and ireland <laughs> <laughs> is it a full coverage open book london yes yep. perfect yep. yes i could and, i could switch um, it out for something different and stitch on st andrews because that could. would work too yeah yeah yes. variety um, united kingdom <laughs> flag colors are red white and blue and you can choose to work on you can match anything in these um yes. categories yep to mm -hmm. what you have. Um, national motifs, the bird is a robin, the flower is a rose, animal is unicorn, lion, hare, red deer, and tree is oak. Themes, Big Ben, London, English writers, um, castles and historic houses, the moors, island life, uh, Stonehenge pubs, strawberries and cream, tea, rain, um, or you can choose an artist from the UK, Ann Stokes, Cyril Marchetti. Um, Joni, you can do your. John Green. Oh, he's yep. from the UK. Lisa Parker, Josephine Wall, et cetera. UK settings, you know, double decker wow. bus. I mean, that's I, anything. The way that UK. they did this, it, they've given you so many options that you can find something. Mm -hmm. and it, it comes down to it that you don't have anything really that will fit the colors of the flag are red white and blue just stitch yep. on something that has all three of those colors in it and you're good yep and mm -hmm. most things have red white and blue in it yeah all right yeah. well thanks girls so that was the fairly intensive monthly discussion for november wow. yeah thanks for joining us guys and we hope you enjoy doing all your stitching on that and we will catch up with you in december thanks so much Bye. Lisa. Good night.